What's up YouTube, it's Roret back at it again with another video. Given recent events like Celsius freezing all their user funds and making it so that you can't withdraw your tokens from the platform anymore, everyone that's gotten into crypto over the last couple years is coming to realize how important self-custody is and what the risks are to leaving your coins on these different cryptocurrency exchanges and CeFi platforms. So if you guys watch the end of the video, I'm gonna be giving you guys step-by-step -step instructions on how you can automate transfers off of cryptocurrency exchanges and save money on fees by using the lowest fee exchange out there on the market today, which by the way, it's no longer Gemini, which is very unfortunate because I really loved Gemini. It is now, drum roll please, FTX and FTX US. So go down below and smash the like button for the cheapest automated self custody and let's level up your brains. All right, guys, so the first thing I wanna draw your attention to here is the trading fees. FTX is getting a 0.1% maker fee, and we covered that in the last video that we did on FTX that I'll link up in the cards. But the reason that we're interested in them today is this crypto fees here at the bottom. It says there are no deposit fees for blockchain transfers. FTX US pays the withdraw blockchain fees for all tokens except ERC-20 and small Bitcoin token withdrawals. I don't really know what they define as small token withdrawals. Like, is that $10, is that $5, is that $20? So I'm gonna try my withdrawal later on in the video and we'll see how much I pay in fees. And then as for ETH and ERC-20, like I've talked about, you know, countless times on this channel, Ethereum and the gas fees are broken and switching to proof of stake is not going to fix that. And these exchanges are understanding that and they're saying, hey, we can't afford to subsidize your withdrawals anymore. I'm personally not aware of any exchange that allows you to subsidize ERC-20 and ETH withdrawals. So this is pretty standard compared to all those other exchanges, but it is better than what we were getting over at Gemini and places like Kraken where there's a static fixed fee tacked on to our Bitcoin withdrawals. The next thing you're going to want to do is go down into the description and click on the Notion link that I have down there where I'm hosting all of this FTX US API scripting code. You'll see something I did here. I added an FTX layer for regular FTX. So if you want to use any of these functions, you can go ahead and download that FTX layer if you are outside of the United States. If you're inside the United States, you're obviously going to download this FTX US layer. And if you're not familiar with this channel, what these layers are basically is it allows us to access FTX US Python dependencies up inside of the AWS cloud environment that I'll show you in a second here. So go ahead and download this layer first and then let's head over to console.aws.amazon.com. If you've watched these tutorials before, you can probably skip this section to the point in the video where I go through how the script works. But if you're not familiar with how we use AWS on this channel, I'll leave a link to the video that explains it up in the cards. Basically, AWS is allowing us to automate these function calls very easily. And the best part about the AWS computer is it pretty much never turns off as opposed to like your laptop, which you'll probably turn off when you go to sleep. So the first thing you're gonna do here is go up to the search bar and type in Lambda. You'll click on Lambda here. You'll see I have a bunch of layers here. You might not have any yet. So you're gonna go over onto the left-hand side. And if you're not on layers already, you'll click on layers and then you'll come up here to the top right and click on create layer. For the name, we're gonna call this FTX US layer. You can give it a description if you want. It's gonna run on x86-64 and the runtime is going to be Python 3.8. Then you're gonna click upload and you're going to upload the FTX US layer that we just downloaded in that last step. Once that's done, you're gonna come down here to create. Once that's done, you'll come up to Lambda and click back to the Lambda homepage and you'll click on create function in the top right. We're going to author from scratch and we're going to change the runtime to Python 3.8. We're going to call the function withdraw from FTX and then we'll scroll down and create function. That took a little while to create. So now let's scroll down and click on add a layer down here under layers. When we're in this add a layer screen, we're going to click on custom layers and then we're going to select the layer that we just created. Mine was called FTX US layer and we'll give it version one and we'll hit add. You'll see that it successfully updated the function and now we're going to go back over to Notion. We're going to scroll down until we find withdraw crypto to external wallet and we're going to highlight this code here. We'll copy with control C and then we'll come back to AWS. We'll delete the code that's already there and we'll paste with control V. And now that we've updated this code, every single time we update the code, we need to click on deploy and you can see if you've deployed already or not because you'll see this change is not deployed if you haven't deployed. So let's go ahead and click on deploy and then hopefully while I'm talking here, you'll see that the changes do get deployed you get this updating the function method and then it'll say successfully updated. So now the latest code is up in AWS and we're ready to start filling in our information to get our withdrawals processing automatically. The first thing you'll see that we need to fill out here are our API key and our API secret. So next let's head over to FTX US or just FTX and I'll show you how to do that. So now that we're here on FTX, I'm gonna go up to the little person icon in the top right and I'm gonna click on API. We'll scroll all the way down to the bottom and you can see if you have any active API keys here. 
I'm gonna click on create API key. You'll copy this top one called API key by hitting the copy button and then coming back to AWS and pasting that in the your API key variable. You'll go back to FTX and you'll copy the API secret and then you'll come back into AWS and paste that into your API secret variable and then you'll hit deploy. Once it successfully updates, what this means is that you have linked your individual FTX US account into this specific Lambda function. And when we go back to FTX, we can see, please be sure to write down your secret. It will not be shown again if you close this dialog. You could put that in a one password sort of situation or something if you wanted to. If you do ever lose your API secret, you can always just come in here and redo those steps and generate a new API key. So we'll go ahead and click close here. In my opinion, it's really important to, if you are not using these API keys actively, come up here to this delete button and just throw them in the trash. So I'm going to delete my old API keys and we'll continue with the ones that I just generated. It's important to clean out your API keys so that if someone else somehow found out what your API key was, they wouldn't be able to trade and in this case withdraw Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency on your behalf. This is a really serious security issue, so please don't share your API keys with anyone, including me. If we come down here to permissions, by default, the only permission will be called trading. So if we click on the little pencil, we'll have to come to withdraws enabled to enable withdrawals for the API keys that we just generated. And then for additional security, you could whitelist your IP address so that these API keys can only be used from your IP address. And I guess really you would have to use the AWS IP address and I'm not sure how complicated that is to get or if they change over time. If you do know, please go down below and leave a comment and I will make sure your comment gets highlighted and hopefully that can help out the other people who want to enable IP address whitelisting. Go ahead and hit close here for now. And then we'll come back into our Lambda function here to look at how the rest of this script works. The first variable that you need to fill in is called coin and it's going to be the coin that you're trying to withdraw. So if, for example, every week you wanted to withdraw all your Bitcoin and all your Ethereum, you would need two different scripts, one for Bitcoin and one for Ethereum. In the first script, you would put Bitcoin. In the second script, you would put Ethereum. And what's good about that is that you can automate them on different schedules. The next thing we'll do here is come down to size. And you can either withdraw a static amount of your coin in the size variable. In this case, it would be 0.01 BTC. Or you can set this flag, withdraw all available, to true if you want to withdraw all of the available to withdraw Bitcoin into, let's say, a cold storage hardware wallet or something like that. If you do want to use the size variable and set your own manual amount, you can just change this withdraw all variable to false. But for now, I'm going to set this to true just so that we can see how it works. Next, down here, you can specify as many Bitcoin addresses that you would like to withdraw to as possible. You could call this address four equals and put just as many as you wanted to here. And then if you did make address four, you'd have to come in here and put comma and do BTC address four. And then this line here will choose choose a random wallet address that you've given it to withdraw the Bitcoin to. This can be really helpful from a privacy perspective if you don't want to reuse the same address over and over and over again and have someone just be able to go on the blockchain and see how much Bitcoin you've been transferring to your Bitcoin address. So for now, I'm going to delete these and just do one Bitcoin address. And I'm going to copy a public key from a mobile wallet that I have. And I'm just going to paste it here in this Bitcoin address. And then I'm going to hit deploy to save all these changes that I've made so far. So now that we have this Bitcoin address in here, this should withdraw all all the Bitcoin in my FTX wallet to this Bitcoin address. Next, you can see some optional fields down here like tag. There are some specific blockchains that need you to send tag information and you can tag your transaction, whatever you want, I think, in other blockchains. This is an optional field. I'm just gonna leave it at none for now. There's the method field, which is also optional. This basically just allows you to withdraw over different networks and you can check out the documentation that's back on the Notion page to see what different methods there are. Here's the password field. This is an optional password field if withdraw passwords are required for your account you could put that here and then this is an optional code field you could integrate this script with the Authy API or the Google Authenticator API pull in your two-factor authentication codes and then post it right here in the code section that would actually make your script here really really secure this password field and this code field would make your script a lot more secure but for the sake of the demo today I'm not going to be using either of these fields this client variable is basically just using our API keys to make a connection with FTX US. And then these three methods, basically the first one, it's going to get the entire coin balance of whatever coin you pass it. In this case, I'm passing it Bitcoin. And then this withdraw coin function is going to withdraw whatever coin you've specified up here. In this case, I've specified Bitcoin. And so now when I go to test this method, I should see if it works, hopefully that over in FTX US, we can see that I currently have 0.00119886 Bitcoin. And if I go ahead and test this script and give it just a dummy event, name called test and then save it. When I hit this test again, it should send those Bitcoin
Bitcoin that are sitting up in FTX US off to the mobile wallet that I've specified up here. Or if you had lots of Bitcoin addresses here, it would pick a random one of those addresses and send it to one of those. And that would hopefully give you a little bit better privacy. So let's go ahead and hit test. Had to make a little fix there. True was not capitalized. So I'm going to hit test. Okay, guys. And so you can see here, I'm getting invalid authenticator code because my FTX US is requiring the settings that I've set up. It needs me to give it a two-factor authentication code here. So I'm going to take my phone down up here. I'm going to populate it with the two-factor authentication code, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit test again. Okay. So this has been a little tricky here. I had a bad Bitcoin address in here, so I put in a good one. And now I'm going to put in my two-factor authentication code. Again, you are not going to have to do this if you turn off two-factor authentication verification on your withdrawals. And I'll show you how to do that in a second here after I have tested this and gotten it to work. So successfully updated. Now let's hit test. So we got withdraw sent. It looks like a good withdraw. So let's head over to FTX US and we'll click on markets. And we should see if you saw it there, it was there for a second. I did have Bitcoin and now it's gone. And you should see that we've gotten a notification up here. So let's go ahead and click on it. BTC withdraw request. We've received a request to withdraw all my Bitcoin, right? So that was all the Bitcoin I had on my account because we had that flag set to true to the address that I provided them. Withdrawals are processed within a few hours. So I'll throw up on screen here when it does get confirmed within my Casa mobile wallet. And you should see that it's for the exact same amount of Bitcoin that I had previously up in my FTX account. And I'll leave all that information on the screen here for you. So if we click out of this and we go to profile and then settings, and then we scroll down here in account security, we can see that I have two factor authentication set up at the account level. But if I want to turn it off just for withdrawals, I can click down here and say, I want to disable 2FA for all withdrawals. The reason I didn't just do that is that I don't have time to refilm this video tomorrow. And if I did this, it was going to freeze all of my withdrawals for 24 hours to make sure that I wasn't a bad guy trying to hack my account and steal all my Bitcoin. So if you don't have this 2FA for withdrawals set up here in settings back in the AWS Lambda function, you can just come here and leave this code variable here to none. And you won't have to deal with all that crazy stuff that I just dealt with trying to get the timing perfect on these withdrawals. The alternative, of course, would be integrating with Authy or Google Authenticator, but that's going to be a lot more coding that I didn't have time to do today. If you're interested in coding that integration up, definitely reach out to me via Twitter on DMs. I'd love to pick your brain about it and then host the code if you're comfortable with that. So now that we've withdrawn once, how can we automate our withdrawals to withdraw, let's say once a month or once every two weeks so that we're always keeping our funds off the exchange and we're not running into any of these liquidity issues that are happening with places like Celsius. I don't know if any of you guys saw the poster fell down. That was crazy. All we're going to do is click back up into the AWS search bar and type in event bridge. You should see Amazon event bridge here. And so you can click on that. So once you get to event bridge, you're going to click on create rule over here on the right. And we're going to give the rule the name automate withdrawal from FTX draw from FTX every seven days. And so then we're going to click down here on schedule and we're going to click on next. So you can set up a very fine grain schedule here and I'll leave popular cron expressions down in the description. Basically, if you fill this out like minutes, so maybe the fifth minute of the 12th, 12th hour of the we don't care what the day of the month is every month on Fridays every year. If you write something like this and you write it correctly, there's going to be the next 10 trigger dates. So, you know, here we can see Friday, June 17th, Friday, June 24th, Friday, July 1st, and so on and so forth. And then you can see the times here 1205 UTC for all of these. You could change this to your local time zone if you wanted to. And then just to give you an example, right, if I change this to like 16, now we're at 1605, now we're at 1609 UTC. And, you know, if you wanted to do every Friday and Wednesday, do something like that. So Friday, Wednesday, Friday, Wednesday. So you can play around with this and really do whatever you want. Or if you don't want to play around with it, you can just say every seven days or every, you know, X number of days. This could be 10 days. This could be 24 days. I think most people are going to want to go with this. And so I'm just going to leave this at seven days for now for an example. And if you do go with this, you know, schedule at a regular rate, the first time that you confirm this rule, the rule will fire. And so at the end of this, when I try to confirm this rule, FTX is going to try to withdraw again. And because I didn't give it a two-factor authentication code, it's going to fail. So let's hit next. The target of this automation that we're building is going to be a Lambda function that we just created. And we're going to find the one that we just wrote. The one that I called was called withdraw from FTX. And then we'll hit next. We don't need to give it a tag so we can hit next again. And then if we scroll down to the bottom, we're basically just confirming all of the different settings that we created here. And we're going to click on create a rule. And so now we have automate withdrawal from FTX. That's going to run in my 
case every seven days. It's going to run for the first time right now. And so it's going to fail because I already just withdrew all the Bitcoin that was in my FTX account. And then if I ever wanted to come in here and say, you know, I didn't want to withdraw from FTX maybe this week, I could come up here, find Amazon EventBridge through search, click on rules over on the left, get back to this rules page, click on the rule that I just created, and I'm going to click on disable, right? And then if I click disable here, this rule won't run anymore. And so those automated withdrawals are not going to happen. And so now let's say, you know, I turn this off. I don't want to automate my withdrawals anymore. I really trust FTX and maybe I want to sell my coins at some point. But then I see that Celsius just imploded and now I'm afraid and I want to take self custody of my coins again. I can come in here, click on the exact same automation here and just click on the enable button and simply hit enable. And so now again, this will run once every seven days on the schedule that we created for it. And then if you did ever want to delete it and create it again, you could just hit the delete button. Hopefully this video was helpful for some of you guys, especially with how crazy platforms like Celsius have gotten recently and then less crazy, but still annoying how Gemini have increased their fees. If the video was helpful, go down below and leave it a like so that YouTube will share it with other people. And then please go share it on social media yourselves so that more people that don't know about how important self-custody is and how easy it is to automate your own withdrawals into self-custody can get the same help that you did here today and hopefully not lose their funds in these crazy liquidity events that we're seeing or exchange hacks like we've seen in the past with stuff like Mt. Gox. If you're in the market for a new hardware wallet, definitely check out the video that I'm going to link up in the cards here. Comment down below if you have any questions or you got lost at any point. I do still respond to all the comments and then feel free to DM me on Twitter if you are having like a really technical issue. It's easier for us to exchange screenshots and stuff over in Twitter DMs. Come back here every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern for new videos. I love you all. Goodbye.